you're an apex predator. You are the greatest killing machine ever designed by nature. And this brain up here, right? And this body and all this is being assaulted. We have a sperm count declining, testosterone levels declining, obesity increasing, processed food use increasing, porn use increasing. These are all connected. If you're not living the way our ancestors lived for hundreds of thousands of years as hunter-gatherers, and you're living in this modern toxic box with artificial lights and shit coming at you from all angles, it is emasculating you. How do you tap back into that wild masculinity? Men, we're here. Colin here, founder of Wild Foods Co. and Rise Brands, and we got Mr. Mitch over here. A little bit of Renaissance man, does a little bit of everything. He's got some pants, he's got some philanthropy. What else <laughs> you got going on? <laughs> this is the intro to the Rewilding Your Manhood series. We're gonna do 10-part episode, a little podcast YouTube setup, and we're gonna talk to, yeah, get that phone out of here, right? That, in fact, that's estrogen producing. You had it right next to your, to, to this, like, no, turn the signal off. We'll get into the, why that's the case, right? And we will also help you get outside, get in nature, rewild your manhood, because you're an apex predator. You are the greatest killing machine ever designed by nature. And this brain up here, right? And this body and all this is being assaulted by this, by environment, whatever. And we're gonna talk about that in this series. And you're gonna do a challenge. I'm not doing the challenge, because look, at, I don't need the challenge. He needs to do the challenge. He's gonna do the challenge. I'm gonna do the challenge. 60 day man Kids challenge. My eyes are doing testosterone. Who, what? Kids my eyes, doing testosterone. I mean, yeah. They're yeah. obsessed with the gym. They a lot the of working out. It, it's, it actually is a lot more than people realize. Like you see a young guy in the gym and he's jacked. I mean, he's jacked for a reason. Yep, He's absolutely. jacking it in, he's jacking it in, or he's jacking it in, right? And we wanna help you actually naturally, nothing wrong with that if you need it, Yeah. right? But natural ways to optimize your hormones. The 60 so day. You, you gotta talk at some point. I just can't well, talk this whole time. The 60 day rewild your man challenge. I'm gonna I record like every shit. document. It's based it's on good. the 10 pillars of how to rewild your life. You can see it on the wildfoods.co website right now. Go to drop down more information, 10 pillars of life. Shit, we need to put that um, there. Well, the rewild your, yeah, the rewild your life is there for general, but we need to make a, like a men's specific. Well, one. that's what's gonna be the challenge that we're gonna right. encourage other people to do it as well. We're gonna have a stack of a bundle of all of the best natural supplements you can take as a man to naturally boost your testosterone, your stamina, And the your natural energy. things you do, not just the supplements. Those exactly. supplements help you, right, but. Because the first thing is the lifestyle, and that's what companies do, they're fake. They wanna sell you their product, but they don't want you to actually change. <laughs> Let's We're just changing that. start slinging <laughs> fire already, right? And again, I'm telling you, this is gonna be at men, so we're not editing this shit out. Like, let's keep it raw and real. Yeah. Uh, we don't need braids in our hair, right? Like, I don't know why I said that, but you know, <laughs> I'm thinking of one dude, right? But hey, he's doing his thing. Um, also, not so sure he's natural, by the way, but we won't get into that. So, where are we at? So, we gotta do, okay, we're gonna go right into all the pillars, but it's kind of a lot. Are we just focusing on one for this episode? No, I was like... Oh, just the, an the, overview the, of the mismatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, so overview of the mismatch. We're also talking about where we're at in our lives. Let's talk about that real quick. So, dad of three, more, on the, more gonna be coming later. Lots and lots of them. Throw them all on a farm, make them do work, they'll be good. Um, 39, 39, dude. 39, and, and legitimately though, the past two years, back pain, fatigue, I sleep literally eight hours a night, um, just attacked on multiple sides from multiple things. Obviously high stress, I'm a high strong individual if you couldn't tell. I don't feel stressed, but you know, your body doesn't necessarily know the difference sometimes. So I've had to work on that, sauna, mindfulness, meditation, long walks on the beach, et cetera. And then Mitch here, I guess year old, talk to yourself about yourself, yeah. Next party animal. Used to work out religiously doing CrossFit when I was starting to get into entrepreneurial lifestyle. Now I'm fully in it. It's excuse, but I haven't found the time. I need to install it back in my life, so it's gonna be a documented journey of the next 60 days. What you can to actually Mitch. do. Mitch to Mitch. What you can actually do when you dedicate your time and do it naturally. Yeah. So. No, and, and all jokes aside, like this is obviously fun. This is the first episode, but legitimately, when I say, like, if your homo hormones aren't optimized as a man, your fing life is behind, struggling, it's hard, like it's hard. I mean, work, kids, like you sleep eight hours a night and you're sluggish at 1 p.m. I, I would sit in front of a computer and just be like, why the, like I need a nap? Am I, am I old? What is going on here, right? So we'll get into the different things I did to do that, right? Um, but I'm definitely more on the upswing now, you know? My, my, my test levels recently, pretty big increase. My energy, absolutely insane. And we'll show you all of the different things that I've done and I've been going at this for a while, so it's not an overnight fix by any means. But I've got my plan, I've got some support, some things that we can offer and help you. But more than anything, most of the things in this list that we're gonna come at you are 100% free. Go outside, walk barefoot, get sunlight, yep. go to the beach, exercise, do some sprints, whatever. There's all these things that you can do that don't cost anything. And then there are some things that you can add for the extra boost, right? Yep. So 
that's my story and where I'm at, kind of on an uptrend. I'm going to share what I did to get there, right? Where are you at in your manhood journey? Well, obviously, when you're young and you're fit, things seem easy and you have boundless energy. Boundless isn't a word. <laughs> boundless is now a word. Boundless energy. When you're young and fit. Well, okay, well, oh, how old are you? Because I'm 39. I'm 24. Okay, I'm 24. 24, 39, right? Literally, the big difference there, almost doubles age. 24, I think we both have been obsessed with health for a long time. We're obviously a lot more consistently exercising previously, and now we're trying to get back in the swing of things, but I like mean, I said- speak for yourself. I <laughs> hit it, dude. Whatever. I'm exercising all the time. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is like, whether you're 18, 28, 39, or 59, these things apply. And I think a lot of older guys, they want you to take the blue pill. They want you to take injections. They want you to pay ridiculous amounts of money when you don't do the natural answers. It's a short, equation. yeah, it's just a shortcut, right? Or when you're young, all of the guys, they want to pump themselves. They want to take shortcuts. They're living toxic lives. They're drinking, they're partying their butts off. They think that's what they need to do to be masculine, pick up girls or look good. And it's lies. So it doesn't matter I mean, what age can, you are. It, but it can work too. It's just expensive. You take a health sacrifice and a lot, and, and generally, we're really trying to reach guys that don't want to do that. Yeah. Right. Like I've forever always been a very, like, I don't want to do that now at my age. though, I've explored these options because like I'm hitting 40 and there are certain things around immunity and health and whatever, but like, it's amazing what you can get done with a lot of sunlight, a lot of sprinting, exercising, a lot of sleep and just eating an animal based whole food diet. I mean, like, mm -hmm. like if you aren't doing that and you want to then kind of jump to something else, it's always going to be a temporary solution that if you, the second you come off of it, all of those problems come back. Yeah. Right. And especially with exogenous hormones, like, like the doctors will tell you, like you will never, um, you will never maintain what you were on one. It almost always resets the baseline. Like I remember talking to a doctor about like, I'm like, I'm like, does it go up a little bit? He's like, no, like, you literally go to exactly where you were before you started. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. That's, yeah. a, that's one of those things. Right. So we have a, a sperm count uh, crisis declining, testosterone levels declining, obesity increasing, processed food use increasing, porn use increasing, and everything toxic for man and or any human increasing. These are all connected. But if we actually break it down into some first principles here. One, you're as a man, even more important than ever. Women have to be outside and be natural because we're, we're humans. But men especially, if you're not out hunting, sprinting, climbing, crawling, barefoot, sunlight, natural foods, natural waters, fasting for periods of time because you didn't get any meat today. Like if you're not living the way our ancestors lived for hundreds of thousands of years as hunter gatherers, and you're living in this modern toxic box with artificial lights and shit coming at you from all angles, toxicity in the water to that go through these gross pipes that they pour shit into, toxicity from the food that's mass produced with pesticide and chemicals and Roundup and all this crap. That's where you spend most of your time all over you, the biggest organ in your body, which is what, Jay, your skin, skin, right? Skin, all just absorbing the toxins in your environment. And what it's doing, it is emasculating you. It's making you, honestly, I don't wanna to be too vulgar on this, but this is towards men. It's making you a bitch. Ah! It's making you a bitch. No! Right? You gotta get outside. Now, you know, Liver King for all his faults, his ancestral tenets are actually legitimate. They're yeah. based on actual real world, ancestral nutrition, health, all the things that I've been studying for years. Uh, minus the, the roids, right? Right, like, but so we actually just ignore all that shit and go back to the core basics. Now, your ancestors, dude, were ripped beasts. They are our ancestors, all of ours, right? We're the most dangerous predator to ever exist on Earth. And that's what we want to really tap into and get you excited about. How do you tap back into that wild masculinity, right? There's some. There's these awesome photos of some hunter gatherers, like in the early like 1900s. I think they were in Australia. In fact, you got to find the screenshot of this. I'll find it. Maybe it was Papua New Guinea, but they were Aboriginals, I believe. And it was three black guys with like these fuzzy beards, whatever. They had a spear, and you could tell it was an old ass camera. Dude, they were fucking ripped, but they weren't big. They were just like you could tell. Like that is a ruthless, it was strong predator. Like you, that little package, and like little guys, but but absolutely fucking shredded yeah. because. They're outside doing these things, living the way our ancestors lived, the, living the way men are supposed to live. And that's why they look like that. It was simply a byproduct of how you live. Now today, we control our environment. We don't have to do any of that. We don't have to hunt and gather. And what do we get? We get f***ing Wally Man. You guys know the movie Wally? Flash it. What do you see right here? Overweight people that sit around because everything's fed to them and you get overweight as a result. That's what we basically have in our modern environment. And it's a mismatch. Hunter gatherers live outside, do all those things, fit. Modern man lives inside, things are done for him, fat. 
It's very simple. And what you want to do as a man to rewild your masculinity is to move as, away as much from this modern convenience shit to this. And that's why you do hard things. That's why like people like Jocko and all these guys and like David Goggins, like, don't be a bitch, just go at it, do whatever. It's like, yeah, it, it's fine. You don't necessarily have to be like that, but it, it helps you move closer to how you're supposed to be as a man, mm -hmm. right? I think we can talk about the physical factors, what you need to do, but a huge thing is psychological. People don't want to go against the grain. They don't want to be different. And that is a big part of it. They don't want to stand out. People are scared. They're scared of being judged. It is hard to be the only person doing something in Well, a what's room. an example? How does that manifest? Because most guys, if you're like, I want to be ripped and jacked, most guys are like, sweet, dude. Like, I don't, I don't know if there's a social, like, there's not really anything holding them back unless all their friends are like overweight gamers and like, you know, then it might be different. I mean, that's a case. That is a case. If kids, they're all, they're a group of people around them don't want to even try to do any of this. Everyone can say, I want to be jacked. They can say, I want to be rich. But are they going to do things behind the scenes that cause that? Okay, so, so, so you're kind of pointing to social environment. All the research is you're the average of seven people you, you talk to the most, mm -hmm. right? So if your friends or family, whoever you spend the most time with, or your roommates are overweight, you are like orders of magnitude more likely to be overweight. Right, we can all agree on that, okay? So you gotta solve that. You gotta get around fit people. You gotta spend less time with overweight people or maybe yep. even cut them out of your life completely. Or maybe you don't go to lunch with them because you know what they're gonna go eat. You, you pack your lunch or yeah. you just don't eat. Or your coworkers are overweight. Great, put some distance between you and the snack area where they hang out or the lunch they're gonna go to or the crap they bring in catered full of crap, right? Mm -hmm. Your social influences are a part of your environment, right? You're, the, the two biggest environments, and this, is, this is actually a good point, the two biggest environments that for modern man he has to contend with are people and the physical environment, okay? So let's unpack that. People, we just talked about it. The people you're around. If you're around fit people, you will become fit. If you're around rich people, eventually you'll become rich. If you're around poor people, you'll stay poor. If you're around overweight people, you'll stay overweight, right? So we already went through the problem. We're gonna go through, Mitch and I real quick, to kind of kick off the series. We're gonna go through what are a couple of things that are working for you now related to hormones, health, whatever, mm -hmm. and what are a couple of things you're struggling with? You go first on either a problem or let's do a um, something you're struggling with right now, and we'll end with something that we're that's working for us. Something I'm struggling with right now is definitely consistent exercise. Absolutely. Why? Why? No excuse. I mean, like, do you, when you okay? Here's a good thing because when I was younger, I, I actually owned a CrossFit gym for ten years, by the way. Um, the idea that you got to go get your, your wad in, your workout, whatever, like it's a little bit of a thing. Like you, it takes time. You got to go. As I've gotten older, dude, what I can get done with a kettlebell or a dumbbell in my f***ing room is actually insane. Like I can get an entire workout with one kettlebell. I can sit there for 15 minutes and do it. Yeah. Is your idea in your head that you have to like go to the gym and commit this whole hour thing and that's why you're not getting into it because you're busy? Maybe your frame of what you can actually do in a day can change. If you did 100 pushups right there, you're toast. Your arms are just like... You know what I'm saying? And nothing's preventing you from doing that. I mean, I, I do probably 100 push-ups a day, like right okay. now. But it's more like, I used to do CrossFit. I knew where I was at, and I did a CrossFit every day religiously. And, and that's what you feel a, like you're missing. It's a hard workout, yeah, right. I can tell. So I want to get back into that, push myself that hard. Whether yeah. I'm doing it myself in the gym or not. Um, but you're still doing some stuff. You do the push At least for my 60-day cha challenge, yeah, I'm doing some stuff. I'm doing much more than the average human. I mean, I run, I walk, I do yeah. at-home workouts, I do yoga. But I want to push myself to the next level in the 60-day challenge. Okay, so that's something you're struggling with, that's fine. We don't need to get into like the solutions right now. Um, and the question was something I'm struggling with, eating more protein and being a f***ing carboholic, you know? And we'll, we'll touch on some strategies in the, in, the, in the nutrition episode, but it's just one of those things like, the heuristic in my mind is that every time I eat, it's kind of a, a handful size of protein is my primary goal. But for my body weight, you know, 165 probably, I really should be eating 160 grams of protein a day, that's the target. Dude, over three meals, that is hard to do, at least for me. I, I've just, protein fills me up so fast. Some people can do that easier. That's sh something I'm struggling with is how do I get enough protein in and how do I get that many grams in? It's freaking tough. I, I've, I, I think I need to add a shake, maybe a 50 gram shake each day. You know, that could be a help. Mm -hmm. um, but then sometimes shakes, the gut gets sensitive. So it's like, it's one of those things. So do we want to do multiple things you're struggling with or kind of two, two? Let's do two, two. One thing is you exercise, one thing is me eating enough protein. Back to you for one more thing you're struggling with hormone health-wise. Honestly, probably social media and porn. I wanna cut those things out entirely. I'll probably go a few weeks, but then I still have those nights. You slip up. Scrolling on a phone for four hours. You've done that for four hours? Oh, 100%, from like what? 10, to, from like 10 to 2 a.m. Oh yeah. <laughs> that must be nice. 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Really? Yeah. Go to bed, I'm and thinking I'm gonna fall asleep at 10 p.m. And it's the phone the whole time? 
Yeah. You just like scroll? Go to bed at 10 p.m. I scroll for a little bit and then I, it's like 2 a.m. I'm like, dude, if I do it for I like 20 do? minutes, I feel like I'm wasting my life away. You know, I, I can only do it at night though. It's well, only when I go yeah. to bed. Yeah, because during the day you like you, you force yourself to be productive. But see, here's my thing at night. I struggle with this too. Um, I default to you know whether it's like Twitter content or maybe I'm even working or I watch a YouTube video. Mm. What I want to actually do is read philosophy. Yeah. Right. And this is for the kind of spiritual mental side. Uh, there's actually some life changing books that I've recently seen in a YouTube video that I'm getting into. Um, Rene Gennard, Gerard is a big one, his stuff. And this other guy that wrote like, what is philosophy? Uh, which is supposed to be like the most life-changing book on kind of philosophy, ancient philosophy ever. It'll change your life. I'm getting into that, but it's like, it's dense text. It's like, it's like, you know, you get there at night, you're like, it's something about reading at night. You're just like, do you do this? But if I'm watching like stimulating shit, I'm wide awake yeah, on yeah, social, yeah. you know? And it's like, I struggle with that. Cause I want to spend most of my later day disconnected give my mind a rest and feed it with good information that's gonna make my life better. And I think a lot of guys want that as well, yeah. but you keep getting pulled into the digital realm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's a tough one. That's my biggest thing is I wish I was reading. I was, yeah. wish I was spending that time reading and writing. Yeah. So those were our two struggles. Now we have two things we're excited about. And that's, that's, that's really- Excited about or we're doing well? Well, it's, it's both. Like, you know, something that's, that's really dialed in, you're, you're seeing results from, it's really working out for you right now. Um, Right now, I mean, I'm cold plunging and sauning for an hour a day, every day. That's a, a lot. That's which is great. Solid. And um, you feel like it always energizes you? Oh, yeah. I you can definitely do, overdo those things, but you know, you gotta, everyone's different. Yeah. I go like every day now. Yep. Um, 15 minutes hot, three minutes cold for an hour, back and forth with wow. breath work okay. in between. Um, right. That's been great. And then, the second thing I'm excited about. What does that help with? Like your mental? clarity or like just like your physical like a lot of it feel? the biggest thing for me is mental personally it is for but there is a huge physical yeah, it's, benefit dude it's totally mental but there's obviously the physical benefit yeah but when you're doing something like that i mean and, and, and just cold in general like you don't need a ton of time in cold to get a lot of benefit i think something in like three to five minutes is like you're good yeah but the mental aspect goes far beyond that and that's what you end up you know doing and then sauna's like 20 to 30 really really solid benefit um and the research you know 30, 60, like maybe there's less research around it, but then I think at that point it is, it's a mental thing at mm -hmm. that point, right? And you still get some physical benefit, but there's always like a minimum effective dose. And then the question is, what are you also gonna get out of it? So yeah, yeah. that's great. The second um, part is tribe. I mean, tribe. I'm gonna get a group of guys. Jay's gonna do it with me, I think. The 60 man wild challenge, rewild your life. Um, it's do gonna be exciting. Do a monthly call or monthly meetup related to it. I'll do it. Which real quick, I wanna call it, which this is my opinion, like wild man challenge. Just that's it. Yeah, dude, wild totally. Man wild Let's man go. challenge. Let's, Let's do go. it. 60 days wild man challenge. We'll have it finalized and there'll be a whole series separately that we'll each individually document. Yep. Great. And we should meet once a month, do it. I also wanna start doing some masterminds. So, uh, things that are going good? Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, fing nut. Vocabulary Nazi. <laughs> I've drastically cut my sugar consumption in the past 30 days, almost to the point where like, I feel like I've kind of destroyed, I've shriveled my sweet tooth, which is there. That's cut down, been leaning up as a result. I know it's been a thing, but you know, you tra like, especially with the traveling with the hurricane stuff, you know, you're eating out yeah. more stuff, like you're buying snacky shit. When I'm in my routine, it's just like steak. It's raw cheese, it's raw milk, you know, it's like, it's just super solid. Um, so I've, I've really cut that back a lot. And I feel like I've kind of broken that sugar Sweet tooth. And, and it's crazy because like, it only takes like five days, dude. Yeah. I was at a point where every day I would just like, I'd grab that dark chocolate or something hidden over here where I do this thing. But after five days, you really, really break the thing where you're not like thinking about going to get it, you know, and that's huge. Uh, big tip there is you gotta keep it out of your house. If it's in your house, you will eat it. I promise you. Yeah. Um, I have a home gym, but it's so easy to just do a couple things and like not really get into it. Just getting back into like an LA fitness routine or like a plant, like just these big box global gyms, I go and I do this leg and back routine for my back, which is actually a game changer for my back guys. Like I'm telling you, like those, those uh, women movements with the legs, it actually really matters for your back. Like I feel kind of lame on, I'm like going like this, I'm going, like this. But, it, but it's like, I did the research and you have to, the hips are so integral to your back structure mm -hmm. that if you don't train them and you're not like sprinting or climbing or whatever, your shit gets all messed up. And it's been a game changer. So, but also just getting into the gym. You get into the gym and you're like, at least every 30 minutes. At home, it's like, I can do three sets, oh, I'm done or whatever. So rebuilding that habit of going to the gym, after work especially, because I was just like defaulting to like driving home. Oh, it's five o'clock, the kids are there, dinner. And I'm like, oh, shit, I haven't even worked out today. I had to retrain that muscle. Yeah. I was just so used to like going home and doing it whenever. Now I'm like, no, I go to the gym, then I get home. And the forcing function for me was like my back. But the other benefit is 
all the other shit, the fitness and the strength and, yep. and all that, you know? And as you get older, I'm telling you guys, I used to be a gym rat, literally owned a gym. I had a juice bar in another gym. I was in gyms all day, right? No problem training, exercising, whatever. Uh, but as I kind of fell to those routines, got some weights at home, I'm telling you, like, it just became easier and easier to do less and less. Yeah. And then you kind of forget what it's like to do like a really good workout. Because yeah. you're like, now my workout, 10 minute workout feels awesome, like enough, but I was really doing 30 and then I was used to do an hour workout, you know? And I, and I think that comes with age, but yeah, that for me, that's a, that's a been a big win. It's just rebuilding my gym routine. That's just like an outside the house thing. Yep. Okay, so now we'll wrap up. What to expect. So this is gonna be a minimum of a 10 part video slash podcast series. We're gonna cover in depth every single main principle from real food to sleep to sunlight to red light to blue light to all these different things. Things that you probably don't even realize that you need to factor in as a man. Really anybody should factor, all men, women too, but these especially hit men hard and we're gonna come prepared with research, with charts, all this overlays, whatever, and we're going, supplements, things you can do, all focus on the natural route. Now I do wanna say that for some men, there is a therapeutic need for exogenous hormone support, absolutely. But also, if you're gonna do that route, you also have to do the basics naturally. And then you add that. So even if you are gonna do that, you still need this. So that's where we're focused is here. The other stuff, and or if you're trying to be a bodybuilder, like, okay, sure, yeah, you know, like, do what you gotta do. But you still do this, because then that's even better. And that's what we're focused on here, mm -hmm. is that. And so we'll see in the next one. Uh, subscribe, like, join the email list. Uh, wildfoods.co, if you wanna get our wild man stack, check it out. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, I think that's all I got. Mitch wants to add anything? Nope. Same thing, 60 day wild man challenge. Stay tuned for it. We're gonna give you education. We're gonna give you application in real life.